Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to do part two. Now we're going to show that the right side equals the left side in Stokes' theorem. On the previous video, we calculated the left side. It ended up being four thirds. So the right side better add up to four thirds. Notice that we need to integrate along this closed loop and there's four separate stages we have to go through, four separate paths that add up to that closed path. So we're going to do the first path, v dot dl, the vector is defined right here, and dl along path number one is going to be the change in the y direction, of course pointing in the y direction. We no longer need the da, da was what we needed for the left side, so let's go ahead and get rid of that, so it's not so confusing. But the dl on that side, so for uh, path number one, the dl is going to be equal to dy in the y direction. For path number two, dl is going to be equal to dz in the z direction. For path number three, dl is going to be equal to minus dy in the y direction. And for path number four, dl is going to be equal to minus dz in the z direction. So those are the four dls we're going to need for four integrals. So there's our first dl. And notice that we only have a y component for dl, that means that the z component will disappear here. We only have a y component, so this will be equal to the integral of 2xz minus 3y squared times dy, and dy will change from 0 to 1. Now, of course, we are along the yz plane, which means that x will be equal to 0. x is equal to 0, so this disappears, this becomes 0. So this is equal to minus 3 times the integral of y squared from 0 to 1 dy, which is going to be equal to minus 3y cubed over 3 from 0 to 1. The 3's cancel out, so this will be equal to a negative 1. All right, for the first path, we end up with a negative 1. Okay, how about path number 2? So the integral of v dot dl is going to be equal to the integral of 2xz minus 3y squared. And notice that in each case, x will always equal 0, which means that this part will always disappear. And uh, the, so this will be equal to y unit vector plus 4yz squared times z unit vector. And so this is now going to be multiplied via the dot product times dl. In this case, dl is going to be dz in the z unit vector. All right, notice that the whole thing here, y disappears. We only have a z component left. So this is equal to 4yz squared, take the integral of that, times dz. And in that case, notice that we're along path number two. Y is always going to equal one. That remains constant, so Y becomes one. So this is equal to four times the integral of Z squared times DZ. Now we can go ahead and integrate. So this is equal to four Z cubed over three, evaluated from zero to one. And so that becomes equal to four thirds. Okay, we had a minus one and a four thirds. Two more paths to go. How about path number three? So the integral of v dot dl is going to be equal to, now we're integrating along this path. Notice that only the y component will survive, so that becomes equal to the integral of 2xz minus 3y squared times negative dy. Also again, remember that x is equal to zero, so this disappears, so this is equal to the integral. So we have a negative times a negative, that becomes a positive. Integral of three y squared dy from zero to one, which is equal to three y cubed over three from zero to one, the threes cancel out, so this is equal to one. So, so far we have for the first path, negative one, second path, four thirds, third path, positive one. One more path to go, path number four. The integral of v dot dl is equal to, again, we're integrating along the z direction, so only the z component survives, so only the z component will survive of our vector. 
So it's the integral of 4yz squared multiplied times dy. Oh, dy? No, no, dz. A negative dz. Don't. Negative dz. All right. Negative dz, like this. But notice we have the value for y. We're on the left side here, pad number 4. And at that point, y is equal to 0. So since y is equal to 0 for pad number 4, this will go to 0. And so we have the integral of 0 dz, and therefore that is equal to 0. So the sum or the result of the fourth integral is equal to 0. So now we have four values, 1, 2, 3, and 4, add them all together. So negative 1 plus 4 thirds plus a positive 1 plus a 0. Notice these cancel out. That equals 4 thirds. And if you remember right, that's the exact value we got for the left side of that equation on the previous video, which means that 4 thirds equals 4 thirds, which means that Stokes' theorem in this example works, the left side equals the right side. And again, it may be a lot easier to do this instead of doing this. And that makes it a lot easier than to work out some of these problems. And it's good to know, to hang on to the knowledge of these theorems. The theorem, Stokes' theorem, can be a very useful theorem. Now you think this may be a lot of work, but at least it's doable. The left side may be prohibitively difficult to do, and so it may, may make it a lot easier to do the right side of the equation. So that's what we mean by knowing those theorems it makes it often a lot easier to pick one side or the other to work out the problem that you're dealing with. And that is how it's done.